Hello, welcome to my second video on Eurocode 2. I'm still using the same textbook. Today's content is on the steel inside the reinforced concrete. Unfortunately, this book does not provide much information on steel, so I've added information from other sources. In this video, we are going to look at why do we put steel in concrete? Complementary qualities of steel and concrete. And finally, the stress strain behavior of steel. Why do we put steel in concrete? From archaeological evidence, we know that people have been using concrete at around 1400 and 1200 BC. That was about that's about four thousand years ago. However, reinforced concrete was first used only in eighteen fifty three A.D. in Paris, one hundred and sixty three hundred one hundred sixty three years ago. This is a huge gap. A lot of construction works have been done within this gap using reinforced concrete, unreinforced concrete. Here are two examples of great works done using unreinforced concrete. They are the Colosseum and Aqueduct. As you can see, human, humanity has been doing fine without reinforced concrete. Why do we still need it? The answer is unreinforced concrete comes with several limitations. It has a very limited span. If you can recall from the photos of Colosseum and Aqueduct, the columns are closely packed. Why? Because concrete is unable to take tension loading. This means if you cannot this means you cannot place two adjacent columns far apart if you are using unreinforced concrete. Next, unreinforced concrete buildings have limited height. What is that so? Whether a building can be built higher is dependent on two physical limitations. One, as it gets higher, it gets more slender. Being slender means a huge height to base ratio. Slender objects can be easily toppled with a small horizontal force. Slender buildings have to sustain huge tension to stay straight and the concrete cannot provide that. 2. Even if you can avoid slender problem by designing a pyramid shaped building, the structure will then be limited by the capacity of its lowest chunk of material to carry the combined load of the stuff above it. To put it in another way, if you keep stacking things on top of each other and keep them from falling from toppling, it will come to a stage when the object, where the object at the lowest level will be crushed. Next, we have a problem with bulky columns. If you build a multi-story building using unreinforced concrete, the columns at the bottom story will take up so much space that you have, cannot do much there. How does reinforced concrete help? First, it allows huge span. Having steel to sustain the tension load allows columns to be spaced further apart. It also allows building to be built higher because having steel in the structure solves the problem of slenderness and crushing limit. Allows columns to be smaller. As, un as reinforced concrete is stronger, we can now afford to design smaller columns to hold the same load. A lot of space can be saved for other uses. Now we are going to look at the individual weakness and strength of each material and how their combination, combination can have complementary qualities. Let's start with tension. How would each of them behave when they are being pulled apart? Concrete will fare very badly. It can take up to only 10% of its compressive force. 
unfortunately still is very strong in tension. Together, steel takes over the entire tension loads of the structure. When we design the tension parts, we practically ignore the contribution from the concrete. Now, we look at the compression. Concrete is very good in compression. It is practically a piece of artificial rock. It can carry heavy stuff. Steel is still good, but easily buckled. Let me explain further. If we are to compare apple to apple, use the same size and dimension of both materials to test, we will find that steel will register a stronger compressive capacity. However, when we use steel, we do not use it at the same amount as concrete. Steel is more expensive and much stronger than concrete. So when we use it, we always use smaller amount, which means smaller sections. Smaller sections will lead to new problem, buckling. Used in combination, concrete helps to hold the steel bars to prevent it from buckling. Strength and shear. Shear means the ability to prevent being sliced off. Concrete is quite okay with shear. The higher composition of the stones, the better it gets in resisting shear. Steel, however, is very good in it. In combination, both sustain shear but still takes a larger portion. Durability means how long the structure can last and resist the forces of nature. Steel or concrete can practically last forever. The Colosseum and aqueduct, which I showed you earlier, are still standing. Steel is vulnerable to corrosion. The higher the humidity and closer it gets to the sea, the higher the rate of corrosion. Left by itself, a piece of steel can practically corrode itself away. Together, concrete protects steel from corrosion. Corrosion happens in an acidic environment. It so happens that the cement in concrete is alkaline. When a steel bar is placed inside concrete, all corrosion processes stop. Fire resistance. We do not want our buildings to be on fire. But if it does, we want it to keep standing. We do not want buildings to collapse if they catch fire. In this regard, concrete is practically fireproof. The concrete have the a concrete house will still be standing even after the fire burns away everything in it. However, steel has a problem. Even before it reaches mountain, its melting point, in which it turns liquid, it will become softest at high temperature. Soft steel is useless in carrying loads. Steel structures are vulnerable to fire. Used in combination, concrete acts as an insulator for steel. Even in a burning building, the intense heat will need a very long time to reach the steel. The fire will have been put out or died out by itself before it can cause the steel to become soft. Another coincident of, coincidence of nature. This table tells us that both materials have almost the same thermal coefficient. Thermal coefficient refers to how much a material expands or shrinks with temperature. In reinforced concrete, both steel and concrete expands and shrinks at the same rate as the temperature changes. We do not have to afraid of building collapse due to changes in day to night or seasons. Now we move on to the stress strain behavior of steel. steel. There are two types of steel used in reinforced concrete based on the way they were fabricated. They are hot roll high yield steel and cold work high yield steel. You may want to ask what is the difference. Let's go through a simplified process of how steels are made. All steel are made by plant workers. Oh, sorry. All steel were made in a cauldron in a plant. It was made by plant workers adding iron ore, coal, and other metals into, into a huge cauldron and turn on the heat. Almost the same way we make soup. After the materials inside have been fully melted, mixed, and impurities removed, 
it will be it will be poured out and rolled into plates. The plant will then sell these plates to the fabricators, who will then turn them into whatever shape they want, including reinforcement bars. Whether a bar is roll, hot roll, or cold work depends on entirely on how the fabricator turns the steel plates into steel bars. If it heats up the plates to make them soft and then roll them into steel plates while they are hot, the product is called hot roll. However, if it cuts, just cuts the plates and turns them into bars by brute force, the product is called cold work. As a result, hot roll bars have almost, has almost no internal stresses in them, while cold work bars have a lot. This is the stress strain curve of bars made from these two processes. For hot roll steel, we use we use the U stress as our design stress. This is the stress when the when the curve. This is the stress when the curve in the curve that shows a horizontal line. For cold work steel, we use the zero point two proof stress as our design stress. It is a stress where once released, the steel will have a permanent strain of zero point two percent. The red line shows the idealized chart we use in our design. For all steel, we have the modulus of elasticity at 200 kN per millimeter square. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.